Hey folks, it's Jim from the Movie Rewind here to give my extended thoughts on the film Moneyball. Oakland A's GM Billy Bean, played by Brad Pitt, is handicapped with the lowest income constraint in baseball. If he ever wants to win a World Series, Billy must find a competitive advantage. By hiring Peter Brand, an economics graduate, Billy is about to turn baseball on its ear when he uses statistical data to analyze and place value on the players he picks for the team. Originally attached to the project, director Steven Soderbergh dropped out due to creative differences, and while Soderbergh's films are not always cold like the appropriate procedural contagion, I feel director Bennett Miller, whose last film was Capote, was the right choice to direct this picture. Moneyball might not entirely be what one might expect. It's a refreshing insider baseball flick from Hollywood, the one that I've been waiting to see. Yet one would think that it would be devoid of any heart in a film looking at statistics, but this is a smart, funny, and sometimes touching flick. It's also a relatively quiet, modest, and slow film for a studio picture that is interested in telling the story of one particular season, and it provides a character study of what drives and motivates Billy Bean. Writer Steven Zylon and Aaron Sorkin create a well-done narrative based on the Michael Lewis bestseller that is similar to The Social Network, featuring a character who goes against the status quo and changes the game forever. Zylon is no stranger to adapting material, and this year he also penned the script for David Fincher's The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, coming out this December based on the international bestseller. Meanwhile, Sorkin provides the witty, smart, and funny dialogue he's known for that makes these characters feel less like movie characters and more like actual people. Earlier I made the comparison between this and The Social Network, but Miller is a far different filmmaker than Fincher. This movie doesn't have a fast pulse or real momentum like that flick does, and its protagonist is an easier one to get behind, despite being difficult to work with. Some might find Billy Bean the actual villain of the story and how he perceives baseball in a completely different fashion that relies on numbers, but for me he is merely finding a flaw within the system, giving the undervalued players who can have a larger part in winning a game their due. Adapt or die, as Billy says in the picture, and adapting is exactly what he does. In the end, he isn't entirely successful, but it soon made apparent to him that he did change the game regardless if the Oakland A's didn't win the World Series. Make no mistake, this is an underdog story, not only for these underdog players who get on base, but also for being challenging the system despite what naysayers might think. Aside from the film's strong writing and Miller's smart choices, like casting many individuals who are not actors but still give strong performances, the film features a performance by Pitt that requires not only a skilled actor, but a screen presence with the actor looking more and more like Robert Redford with every day. It's a movie star role, and Pitt has a terrific dynamic with Jonah Hill, who plays Peter Brand. We don't get much backstory to Brand, but Hill's comedic timing is still present, and he smartly underplays it, stretching his wings a little bit. Philip Seymour Hoffman, who worked with Miller on Capote, plays Art Howe, the Oakland A's athletics manager. It's a slightly underwritten role, but having an actor of Hoffman's caliber isn't a bad thing as he is consistently butting heads with Pitt. If Billy asked me to call you back, he's on another line. Tell me one, 225000 for Rincon. Billy says he needs $225,000 for Ricardo Rincon. Please. Yes, I, I added the please at the end. For me, Moneyball marks the first truly convincing leading performance from Pitt, a smart character actor trapped in a leading man body. He sparked chemistry with Morgan Freeman and his first collaboration with David Fincher in the film Seven. Whatever, the point is, is that I don't think you're quitting because you believe these things you say. I don't. I think you want to believe them because you're quitting. You want me to agree with you and you want me to say, yeah, 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 you're right, it's all fucked up, it's a fucking mess, we should all go live in a fucking log cabin. But I won't. I won't say that. I don't agree with you. I do not. I can't. He took our narrator in the strange world of Fight Club as an anarchist who fought against consumerism. The middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war. No great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. We've all been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. But we won't. We're slowly learning that fact. We're very, very pissed off.
He confused moviegoers to no end as the talented Irish boxer Mickey who spoke pikey in Guy Ritchie's film Snatch. Hey, Liv, she wants a heck of two roof lights, uh, the Stanislaus frame furniture, and the uh, scarf cushions with the uh, mats and shag pack over. Yeah. Right. It's a terrible parcel to the party with the blue bags. Have I made myself clear, bags? Yeah, that's perfectly clear, Mickey, yeah. Just give me one minute to confer with my colleague. Did you understand a single word of what he just said? He sported an absurd haircut as possibly the most clueless character yet from the Conan brothers as the trainer and airhead Chad. Yes, I am. You have the money? The $50,000? That's what was agreed upon. Osborne Cox. All right, let me explain something to you, Mr. Black. You know who I am, I know who you are. Perhaps, but appearances can be deceptive. Yeah. This isn't to say Pitt hasn't been effective in leading roles, but he usually seems to accelerate in supporting roles or offbeat characters than he does in something like Troy. Marmadans, my brothers of the sword, I'd rather fight beside you than any army of thousands. Let no man forget how menacing we are. We are lions! If you know what's there, waiting beyond that beach, immortality, take it, it's yours! He may have leading man looks, but for whatever reason he is far more electric when he isn't typecast in pretty boy roles. Regardless, Pitt for the most part might be making the best choices out of any movie star today. Like Leonardo DiCaprio, he seems interested in challenging himself as much as possible. Similar to Matt Damon, the actor tries to work with the best filmmakers possible. The movie star is already a rather active producer, and I wouldn't be surprised if he had future ambitions to direct similar to Matt Damon. And like Kaluni, Pitt seems open to collaboration, willing to take on both leading and supporting roles to improve his craft. While the actor probably had top billing, he was a supporting player in Terrence Malick's Tree of Life, which was released earlier this year, proving a movie star can have a career of financial success and popularity, but also artistic fulfillment. Okay, come on, three quarters. Cover, you're gonna cover, right? Okay, hit. Come on. Nice, nice, harder. Nice. That's a good right. Let's see your left. It's the most important thing. Okay? You come in this way, you come in this way, you keep the guard up. Hit me. Come on, hit me. Come on. Come on, Jack. Hit me. Hit me. Hit me. Come on. Come on, hit, here it is, here it is, hit, come on, son, come on, son, left, what are you doing? He's also faced with a difficult challenge of keeping his character in this film thoroughly captivating when the character doesn't change much at all. It's what he does that changes everything. Still though, the character starts to find his love for baseball again, thanks to the help of his loving daughter, realizing that he should enjoy the show, which includes his most recent achievements, even if he didn't make it all the way to the end. While at times it lacks the mythical sense of baseball, the film features restrained direction, a tight and smart script, and a strong cast. I hope you enjoyed this review, and that's it from the Movie Rewind. Have a great day, folks. Until next time.